Hi, so in video 986, we looked at the Jewel Thief. And we looked at the Jewel Thief because it was inspired by the Bedini SSG. It struck me that the SSG and the Jewel Thief looked remarkably like each other. Now, the Jewel Thief is a um, self-oscillating high-voltage oscillator. It's a step-up transformer, really. And I particularly noticed that when I had a look at the two circuits side by side. So, have a look at this. striking isn't it? Now in the um, Jewel Thief the two coils are wired to each other and in the SSG one coil is unwired from the other and acts as a trigger coil. Now the Jewel Thief switches itself. The SSG is switched by an approaching magnet so in theory all we need to do is decouple those coils at that point, move it to the negative approach that with a magnet, and it should respond in the same way, that is, light up the LED. So let's have a look at that. So here's a jumble of wires that is all that circuit held together with crocodile clips. Here's the LED lit up, there's the actual coil arrangement, there's the heart of the Jewel Thief, so to speak, right there. This little mess here is where the top end of the Jewel Thief coils are joined to each other, and there's the battery. Now, this wire comes from this coil here, so if I disconnect there, that lamp will go out. There we go. Now if I just put that on the negative of the battery, we have in fact formed the SSG circuit, or at least that's what I'm saying. Now in order to see if that's right or not, I've got a bunch of magnets here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this coil with a bunch of magnets, and we should see that LED flash as it's triggered by the magnets. There you go. I don't know if you saw that. So let's try that again, but I'm going to turn out the lights so we see the flash better. There you go. Well, that seemed to work. Now, if what I'm saying is right, that is, it's all down to this thing here, this bifilar coil, where one is being triggered by the other to create a collapse, where the collapsing field creates a high voltage spike on the other coil, and that high voltage transformation is what's doing all that work. Now, if that's right, anything should be able to do that as long as it can switch. So what I've got here is a little micro switch and I've attached the micro switch in line with one of the coils and the other coil is directly attached to that LED. If I flick that micro switch, see the LED lighting. Again, I'm going to turn the light out so you see that better. So it seems to me the heart of the system is here. It's here and a switching mechanism of some description. So we have two coils, remember, by file coil. There's only about 30 wines on this. Um, we switch one coil, it collapses, drives a high voltage spike in the other coil, and that's what you're harvesting. Now, any a switching arrangement, it would seem, would work. Bedini uses those rotating magnets. We did a magnet just straight against it to show magnetic switching. We use mechanical switching. We've used a transistor to switch. But any of those switching arrangements is going to work. Now, it's a good thing. Not a bad thing. It's not a criticism. Remember what I said in the previous video. If you can't replicate something using the logic but alternative methods, there's usually nothing to it. If you can replicate it using logic and alternative methods, then you're onto something. So I think it's a positive thing rather than a negative thing, okay? So the heart of the system is a method of switching, and that can be a whole range of methods of switching, a bifinal wound coil on some kind of core. And again, remember, we showed it could be any kind of core, really. The rest, once you show that, is optimization. And okay, this is not going to be the best. I mean, we didn't get a particularly bright light. <laughs> switching it by hand with 30 turns. You're recommended to do sort of, I think it's 850 turns or something crazy. The more turns you put on, the more you're going to see that noticeable voltage spike. This has been used for things like um, battery charging. Now, battery desulfonation by high frequency, high voltage pulsing is actually quite a popular method for reviving lead acid batteries. So it has applications in that. Now, he uses the power coil to drive that wheel around, so it's actually kind of self-switching, being driven by the magnetic rotation. That motor will do some work, and there is an Australian group uh, called Panacea Bocaf who did something called a rotoverter, which I quite liked because it 
looked at motors and looked at scavenging the energy from them when they weren't under load and then feeding the energy back in when they were under load and it looked really kind of cool. Um, but I was asked to look at it. That's pretty much as much as I'm going to do on it really because I'm really only interested in investigating the logic and what can possibly work. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.